Right everybody, we're back at the auto show and we're at the Ford exhibit. And they have this really cool simulator that I'm gonna take a look at. Ford Performance has their Mustang simulator set up. Tucson. It's just supposed to be like the, Hyundai calls this the right size SUV. Yeah. This is the one with the Infinity Premium audio system. Yeah. Yeah, they did. They cranked up the bass. <laughs> they always do this. They always crank up the bass. Yep. Yeah. Why do they do that? I don't know. Yeah. So you have your steering wheel mounted audio controls. A rather scratchy and hard steering wheel, plastic steering wheel. Yeah. Right. But at least you do have a manual control to the transmission, auto climate control, push button start, configurable drive mode. That's the downhill brake compensation. So it will downshift the transmission going down a hill. We do have this as a business. It feels almost like leather, but it's not. It's simulated leather. But all this is hard touch, this material. And this looks like carbon fiber. Again, it isn't. <laughs> yeah. But you do have a good audio system and quite a lot of space in the back. <laughs> of course, the Hyundai Veloster N. And it's Hyundai's new performance brand. Sort of like N Sport or A Spec or any of those performance designations. It's like, basically, a you know, higher performance version with the big turbo and the four cylinder engine. But. You have this drive mode button on the steering wheel, and then you have an N button. The N button is for a predetermined, predetermined set of uh, performance settings. And you do have an actual, honest to goodness, stability control off button that actually does disable the stability control. <laughs> and an honest to goodness stick shift. Oh my, and that's yeah. the goodness stick shift with a clutch. Yeah, with a clutch. <laughs> with a real clutch pedal. <laughs> goodness. <laughs> I feel like... One thing I've noticed is the tuning knob. It's very slow to change channels. Even if you crank it around like mad, it only changes channels like... Yeah. It's pretty slow. And of course the Veloster N has tiny rear seats. Yeah, they're only pretty much only meant for children. Yeah. Nice, nice gear throwers. Though. Yeah. They're not too short. No, but they're, they're not too short, but they're, they're crisp. It, it, yeah, it's notchy. It, yeah. 
has a nice notchy action to it. Mm -hmm. And the outside of the velocity and you have an actual carbon fiber for the spoiler. A black carbon fiber spoiler. And how do you open the trunk of this? Oh, that is. <laughs> but you st you have a rear wiper. Hmm. That's interesting. What? It has a tiny rear window, but it has a rear wiper. Uh -huh. And just for comparison's sake, here's the back of the regular Veloster. The Veloster Turbo. 2019 Hyundai Elantra. It's redesigned for 2019. Oh, uh -oh. Interesting, it has a sport mode for the automatic transmission. It's the clean air automatic climate control yeah. system. Whatever that means. Yeah. Probably has a built-in air filter or an ionizer. There's paddle shifters on the steering wheel. Plus, kind of redundant. A plus minus stick gate on the gear shift. I guess certain people prefer going up and down with the, <laughs> the stick to shift, while others prefer the paddle shift. And again, like all Hyundai's, it has an honest to goodness stability control off button that actually turns the stability control completely off. And like a lot of cars, it has its own name on the door sills. The back seat does not have any air vents. But it is decently spacious back here. I have enough leg room. Even if I move over to the seat that if I move over to the seat that has seat all the way back, I still have a little bit of leg room. It's not a lot, but I still have a little bit of leg room. You get cup holders in this, but you do not get a trunk pass-through. It's interesting. I've seen more cars these days are foregoing this trunk pass through, especially smaller ones. Back here, did in the early 2000s, they had the whole car's name all the way across the trunk lid. Uh -huh. This is what I pretty much what I came to Hyundai for. The Ionic Hybrid, the most fuel efficient car in America, it has this sort of pseudo hatchback body style, like half sedan, half hatchback. kind of interesting but it does give you a lot of space and a lot of headroom unlike other sedans where it likes to they like to have that slope that aggressive slope down in the back which really hurts the rear headroom have a lot of space back here thanks to the kind of hatchback like design you do have air vents in the back unlike the Elantra which is basically the same size <laughs> I don't know why they did that I'm sure it's something to do with fuel efficiency like, they have a vent to direct heated air to the back seats, so you don't have to run the engine as often. To heat up the cabin, which in turn saves fuel. Stepping inside the front seat of the Ionic, you have these eco materials made of bamboo and stuff. And environmentally friendly materials on the dashboard and all around the cabin. You have this cup holder, which yeah, it is big enough to accommodate a full-size cup, and you have a traditional shifter controlling a traditional dual-clutch automatic, which is kind of interesting because they have paddle shifters, so it's pretty interesting because conventional hybrids have continuously variable transmissions, and it can be a little bit uncertain feeling when you stomp on the accelerator pedal or when you need power because it can be like kind of rubber bandy like you're flooring it it's like pulling back a rubber band and then it goes it, it, it hesitates and then the engine speeds up and the electric motors push you forward and it takes a minute for the engine to spool up and provide the necessary power so it's like kind of uh, 
weird feeling when you accelerate and also accelerating hard the drone though it sounds like an aircraft engine in a conventional hybrid when you stomp in the accelerator you need a lot of power it's like and this doesn't have it this this shifts just like a conventional automatic and it shifts very quickly, it shifts very smoothly, and there's no rubber band effect, and the electric motor can power the wheels alone through the automatic transmission. And there's a driver only button for the climate control system if you want to save fuel. If you're the only one in the car, you can hit the driver only button and it'll route the AC and the heating only to the driver. And there's also the, these buttons on the bottom. Kind of like a piano. <laughs> to control the climate control system and also the radio and US 99 winning you can go between modes by hitting the radio button and you got your typical hybrid energy displays and you can also tap this to deliver a more detailed view and you can tap this to deliver a real time fuel economy as well as display the electric only motor use the button down here is for the 12 volt battery Yes, this car still has a 12 volt battery, but it's integrated into the, the hybrid battery pack. So if the battery dies and you can't start the car, and the accessory won't work, you hit that button. And the lithium polymer, the hybrid battery pack, delivers a jump start basically instantly to the 12 volt battery. So you always have juice in the 12 volt battery. The thing I really like about the Ionic is it's a hybrid. But it doesn't look like a hybrid. Like it doesn't look like a Prius. No. But at least, like it doesn't look like a regular sedan. But it doesn't really look like a hybrid. It looks like an Elantra. The only way you could tell it's a hybrid, basically, from the outside, is from this blue drive icon on the fenders and the aerodynamically spoked wheels, which are designed to increase fuel efficiency. It's the Honda Civic SI. Here in the display. Yeah. From Honda Factory Performance. Let's take a look inside. You have manual seats. Hmm. Yeah, you have manual seats. You pull the lever underneath to slide the seat forward and back. There. You have an actual six speed manual with a real clutch. <laughs> no paddles on this. Yeah. A six speed manual with yeah, the throws are actually pretty, pretty positive. It's very positive, very notchy feel to them. But they took the shift lever off. They keep people from stealing it. And so again, it has automatic climate control, but it doesn't have automatic seats or power seats. It's sort of interesting that it does that. But the SI has that, probably to save weight, but. I guess automatic climate control is just software, so software doesn't really add weight. <laughs> but power seats would add weight. <laughs> There's a redundant sport button. I guess it's already a sporty car, you don't really need a sport mode. <laughs> and it has cloth seats still. Yeah, it has cloth seats. But they do have an SI logo on them. And they have fairly heavy, fairly heavy duty bolsters on them. 
And the back seat is the same size as the regular Civic. So I guess if you have kids, this would be a fun car to get. The fiber, carbon fiber trim on the, all the way across here. I doubt it's real carbon fiber though. Yeah, this is a new Passport. Basically a smaller version of the Pilot. The same push button shifter as the Acuras, but it's like a squared off button instead of a round button like the Acuras is. And it has basically the same all wheel drive system as a TLX or an MDX. But not the RDX because the RDX is a new system. But it's basically the same super handling all wheel drive system, yeah. but it's programmed differently. And this is the omnipresent Honda 3.5 liter V6 with 10 less horsepower than the MDX. So it's 280, 280 horsepower. But it's tuned for regular fuel, so I guess that's a compromise they had to make to make sure you can use regular fuel with it. The Acura is they require premium. But if you put regular in them, they'll take it just fine. They'll just deliver you, give you 280 horsepower like this one does. It's a pretty basic version. Clock, clock seats, small touch screen, a lot of tactile controls though. Yeah, I like that. Push button shifters, like the Acura's, but it has a different button design. Terrain mode switch, you can go between drive and snow and mud and sand and stuff like that. And of course, it does have the Honda Sensing with the uh, Lane Keeping Assist system. I, yeah, it still does have the adaptive cruise control. I was wondering if it didn't, but it does. And this has the i-VTM4 all-wheel drive system, which is basically the super handling all-wheel drive, but it's programmed differently. Like I just said. But... So this one, the Passport only has two rows of seating. Whereas the Pilot has three, but the Passport has more space for stuff in the back. Yeah, there's a lot more space for stuff in the back. Yeah, there's a lot of space in the back. Yeah, different cargo compartments underneath here. There's your spare tire. It has an actual spare. Unlike Acura's, which don't have a spare for weight savings. Weight reduction is always the answer. There's a cord plugged into this car because it's a Clarity plug-in hybrid. These haven't been selling very well, really. They've been less reliable than previous Hondas as well. But it's very comfortable in here. It's like Honda used, back in 2012, Honda had a, a car called the FCX Clarity, which is a fuel cell hydrogen car. They still offer the hydrogen option for this car, but only in California. So, you have the push button shifter again, and then you have an econ button, a sport button, and an HV button. And the HV button is to switch the vehicle into hybrid vehicle mode. So the car starts in EV mode, and will use the battery as long as it can before switching to gas, or before switching back to the hybrid mode. If you want to force the hybrid mode, you hit this button. And if you hold the button for a few seconds, it switches to charge mode, in which the engine remains on and it will charge the battery. That's good if you have a trip on the highway and you want to charge the vehicle up on the highway, not use the battery, and then use the battery in the city when you get to your destination. This is very nice, like suede or Alcantara material on the door sills. And then you have leather here. This is hard touch, but 
Who cares? Who will touch this anyway? <laughs> this is kind of fake wood grain, I think. Or is it real wood? No, it's... That's fake wood grain. And this is metal, which is interesting. Yeah, that's metal. That is real metal. You have cup holders, which... I don't think this... Like, these cup holders are pretty small compared compared to the size of drinks our Americans have these days. So <laughs> this won't fit one of those massive, like 18 ounce drinks. You have paddle shifters on the steering wheel, but the paddle shifters are not for the transmission. Like in the Honda Accord Hybrid I reviewed a while back, you can check out the review up here. The paddle shifters are not for the transmission, they're for the regenerative braking. So pulling the minus paddle will get you a little bit more regenerative braking each time you pull the paddle. There are four levels. And then pushing the plus paddle will decrease the level of regenerative braking down to the normal level. If you come to a stop in drive, the regenerative braking will return to its normal level. But if you come to a stop at the sport button, the regenerative braking will stay at the level you commanded with the paddle. Until you hit the plus paddle back to the regular level. The M indicator will display on the dashboard next to the indicator of the regenerative braking. So it's like drive versus manual mode in the transmission, but it doesn't the vehicle doesn't have a transmission. It's regenerative braking, manual versus auto mode or semi-auto mode. So I guess it gives you this experience similar to a manual transmission, but not really. We actually reviewed this car. This is the Honda Accord Hybrid Touring. Yep. You might have remembered it from the video I did a while back. <laughs> These are really nice cars. I have driven one. Uh, they drive really well even though they have the CVT. The CVT isn't really that intrusive until you really start pushing the car. That's a cool logo. It's like animated. Again, these paddle shifters do not control the transmission. If you watch my review, I, I went over these buttons. So this is an Econ button. It basically dumbs down the throttle pedal response and dials back the climate control to save fuel. And the sport button, it basically makes the accelerator pedal hyperactive and it may give you a little bit of extra output from the battery but I'm not sure and EV mode lets you stay in electric mode up to about 45 miles an hour if you keep a light foot in the accelerator pedal of course if you floor the car it will go into hybrid mode even if you have it in EV mode it'll stay in EV mode for about a mile and a half and then when the battery gets low it'll go back to hybrid mode push button shifter uh, climate control system the ring around the dial this is pretty cool when you turn the temperature up the ring lights red when you turn the temperature down the ring lights blue just a nice little Easter egg to tell you which way you're turning the dial <laughs> and you get the temperature display in the this OLED display panel right there and this is a tradi traditional LCD and touch screen controls your all your main major functions. You can also get a hybrid power monitor and it's about it for the entertainment system because we can't start this vehicle up or this vehicle does not this vehicle is not at the auto show in its accessory mode so I can't access any of the features. So Yes, this is about it for the 2019 Accord, seeing that I can't operate any of the features. Alright. Backseat is pretty spacious actually. I can get the vents back here. 
No one touch automatic up down windows for the back. Yeah, because it's a cool door handle which looks like a leaf kind of. <laughs> Maybe it's just me or it looks kind of like a leaf. <laughs> Has this kind of kind of sloping like low roof line back here. So. Not as much headroom as a hatchback. And again, no trunk pass through. But you do get these interesting square cup holders. It's kind of neat. Forgot to mention this on the touring, you actually get seat eaters in the back. So the inside is it's 56 miles to the gallon. It's a hybrid. And it's built on the Civic platform. Every single trim level. The Honda Pilot is a win. That brand new 2019 Honda vehicle. has 148 horsepower. Enjoy the rest of your day here. Gets 48 miles to the gallon. Look. So basically the same push button shifter, but the 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 drive mode selectors are on the right. Econ, Sport, and EV, just like the Accord. And the automatic climate control. You have less buttons in the Accord, less tactile buttons. You only have four. Five, four, five. Yeah, I only have five buttons. Paddle shifters for the regenerative braking. Roll up and down. Cruise control, adaptive cruise control with low speed follow. Lane keeping assist. The seat's about the same size as the Civic. This. Safety sense on off buttons, fuel door open, stability control off, which actually doesn't turn the stability control off, it just desensitizes the traction control. It's pretty much an I'm stuck in the snow button. Cup holders actually slide back so you can fit more stuff in here. And then the this opens up and you can you can have either this and you can slide this back. Gives you a lot of versatility on what you want in here. This is just a little storage space. This is can give you more storage space. You can close this. You can have only one cup holder exposed if you only have one cup. And you can have storage space in here. There's a little circular thing down here, but I'm not sure what that's for. Maybe if you have an extravagantly big cup, yeah, I think you so. can put it down there. Just <laughs> and you have a, I think this is removable, but you have, I think that's a wireless charging pad actually. And you have a US, two USB ports and a power outlet. And the passenger airbag off light is down here as well. The thing about both of Honda's hybrids, all of Honda's hybrids, the battery does not intrude into the trunk space like it does with something like a Prius or a Ford Fusion. Pretty cool engineering solution for Honda. They actually put the battery under the rear seat. So if you go down here, you can see that this under here is the battery. And there's an air vent. Uh, cord. Yeah. This left side is a 7 inch LCD display, regular LCD, but on the right side it's a physical speedometer. So these buttons are on the side so you have a physical back button, a physical home button, so you can go between the things. The settings, trip computer, on the hybrid it would be the hybrid energy monitor. But overall I like these tactile buttons. This is 
touch screen and You can pull off a physical clock. So you can just display the clock. That's interesting. And this is the CVT transmission. E, R, N, D, S, and L. Sport mode and low range. Low range is for descending hills. CVT will attempt to vary its ratio to keep the engine in its, in its power band where it will provide the most engine braking. And Accord Sport 2.0T. 2.0T stands for the 2 liter turbocharged engine. Redline's 6800 RPM. 0 to 60 in 5.9 seconds. And it can do 130 miles an hour. And this is the Sport, the 2.0T Sport with the six-speed manual transmission. Nice. Nice positive engagement feel, the transmission. And this is what I was talking about with the hybrid, the cord, the, uh, that it turned, that the indicator turns blue around the, the dial when you turn the temperature up and it turns or it turns blue when you turn the temperature down, and then it fades back to white eventually, and then it turns red when you turn the temperature up. And you can adjust the fan speed for this selector and push auto and turn the whole system on and off by pushing these buttons. And you can synchronize the temperature between the driver and the passenger. You also have three stage heated seats, and the touring, you get three stage cooled seats as well as heated seats in the rear. The sport model has these cool looking wheels. Alright, we're at the Chevrolet exhibit. Checking out the 2019 Chevy Colorado. The state of Colorado is awesome. And I'm sure this truck is as well. This is a mid-sized pickup, smaller than the Silverado. Yep. The rear seat, you have a good amount of room, but it's not like pretty useless back seat. Pretty useless, yeah. No, you don't have much leg room, really. Except for gear, you want to keep out of the way. Yeah, I guess for that way, that use. Something that feels like paddle shifters on the back, but it's not. It's audio controls. Uh -huh. Yeah. I have a basic analog dashboard with a little center screen. And you have... The interior has leather seats, and, but this is all hard touch. Except this, which is kind of leather simulated material. And the steering wheel is leather wrapped, which is nice. But the manual controls for the transmission, the up, down, plus minus is on the left of the selector. It's kind of like a rocker switch. It has an eight speed automatic hooked up to a four cylinder turbo. Just, I believe, the first four cylinder turbo ever in a truck, ever in a Chevy truck. Automatic climate control, small touch screen, nothing massive. But there's physical buttons for track forward, backward, home, and a physical back button. And there's a physical selector knob for tuning and an enter button. And there's a power on off button and a volume knob. Moving down here, you have buttons for the trailer towing assist. The trailer button, the tow haul mode to the transmission traction control off button. I don't think that's a true stability control off button. I think it's just traction control off. And then 
hazard lights. I believe I don't know what that is. Yeah. Heated cold seats. Downhill brake control. Judging by the hood. Parking sensors. And heated cold seats with the passenger side. It's available with either a V6 or a Turbo 4, but this is the V6 version. This is a 2.7 liter four cylinder engine that powers the Chevy Colorado. It's 310 horsepower, compression ratio 10.1, 10 to 1. It has active fuel management. It's a variable valve lift, low and high lift. It's a low lift for better fuel efficiency, high lift for more power. The Silverado Z71, this is the big old truck. You have the headlight selector, all wheel drive mode selector, two wheel drive, all wheel drive higher, all wheel drive low. And trailer brake controller. It actually has a built-in trailer brake controller, mm -hmm. so you don't need a separate one. Stand up and do and Interesting. Smile. There is no indicated Bus. red line on the tachometer. Bus. Bus. It only it, it just goes to six thousand, and the, there's no indicated red line. Bus. And all these gauges, like battery voltage, coolant temperature. Fuel gauge, oil pressure, and column shifter with the manual controls as a rocker switch, and the trailer button, the tow haul mode. And small touch screen again, with the same physical controls as the Colorado. Christian. Automatic climate control, dual zone control. Chevrolet 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 heated steering wheel and heated seats, which is nice in the winter, having a heated steering wheel. Monster storage compartment. <laughs> Bose audio system. Big step down from this. Okay. Even with the running board. Alright, this is my experience at the 2019 Chicago Auto Show. If you have any questions about the auto show or anything else you'd like me to review, just leave them in the comments. And this is A-Spec signing out.